reasons that in our state, the largest provider of mental health care services today is the county jail system. So bad that too many with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and clinical depression literally getting arrested on purpose to go to the one place that they are guaranteed to see a provider and to temporarily be okay before they are out on the streets. In our great state of Texas, I shared with people our story in El Paso with Silat Juarez, the largest binational community in the Western Hemisphere. Three million from two countries speaking two languages, joined, not separated by the Rio Grande River, forming something far greater and more powerful than the sum of their parts or the number of people. El Paso, Texas, one of, if not the safest cities in the United States of America. Never again is another child put in a cage, sent to a foster care home while that mom is deported back to her country of origin, the very place from which she fled. Not only must we reunite all of them, but we must rewrite our immigration laws in our own image to reflect communities like this one here in Los Angeles, like El Paso, like this country. And that means freeing every dreamer from any fear of deportation by making them U.S. citizens in this, their true home country. We can share with our fellow Americans, as we did in Texas, that we will not purchase security with a $30 billion, 2,000 mile long, 30 foot high wall. We will not force others who are coming to this country to join family, to flee persecution or death, to cross in the most inhospitable stretches of the border. The walls that we already have have produced hundreds, thousands of deaths of our fellow human beings who are not deported, who are not in cages, who are not separated, but are dead, not living the lives they were intended to live. We are gonna make sure that we understand that security is purchased not with walls or militarization or cages or cruelty, but by treating our fellow human beings with the dignity and respect that they deserve. That we are all created equal to equal opportunity, to equal outcomes if we will just invest in one another, and that our strength is that people choose us. And if immigration is a problem, it is the best problem that the United States of America could have right now. This is an opportunity for us. And by talking about these issues in every part of Texas, though we came up a little short, 2.6% for those of you who were counting, and we were, we, we garnered more votes than any other Democrat in the history of the state of Texas. We helped to flip the United States House of Representatives by electing two new Democrats in the seats held by Republicans. We changed the composition of our state legislature and in Harris County, home to Houston, Texas, 17 African-American women elected to judicial positions of trust and power, literally changing the face of criminal justice in this country's most diverse city. Those of you who helped us in Texas, you made that happen. Those differences. He wants to make us angry, he wants to make us afraid, and he wants to keep us apart. When he describes Klansmen, neo-Nazis, and white supremacists as very fine people, when he conflates the words of a Muslim member of Congress, Representative Elon Omar, with the attackers of 9-11, when he describes Mexican immigrants as rapists and criminals, and asylum seekers as animals and an infestation, he is giving a license not just to offend but to act against one another. Hate crimes in this country up every single one of the last three years. We see the violence in our communities. We see the differences between us that almost seem unbridgeable. In other words, we are creating or exacerbating the borders that we have in our communities right now. Las fronteras que tenemos adentro de nuestras comunidades, entre los que tienen cuidado de salud, y otros que no pueden ir al doctor, los que tienen ciudadanía 
y los que viven bajo del miedo de deportación al otro país y los, los que pueden sobrevivir en un trabajo y otros que necesitan dos o tres trabajos para sobrevivir. There are borders between all of us in this country right now which we must transcend. We must not be defined by our differences or keep us from the work in front of us. Because be beyond the fact that there are tens of millions who cannot get care today in this country, too many dying of diabetes and the flu, curable cancers in the wealthiest, the most powerful country on the face of the earth, millions who live in fear of deportation, including more than a million dreamers and an economy that works too well for too few and not at all for too many. The mother of all challenges is before us now, and that is the fact. The planet Earth has warmed one degree Celsius just since 1980, caused not by God or by Mother Nature, but our own emissions, our own excesses, and our own inaction in the face of the facts and the science and the truth. And it will continue to warm, and the floods and the fires and the droughts that consume lives and property in this country around the world will get existentially, exponentially worse for our fellow Americans and our fellow human beings. Those scientists who tell us this say that there are still 10 years left to us to get it right, to free ourselves from a dependence on fossil fuels, to transition to renewable energy, to make sure that we bring farmers in to plant cover crops, to pull carbon out of the air, use precision tilling to disturb less of it in the soil, to do everything we can to set the example for the world, and then once again take our rightful role as the indispensable country convening the other powers of this planet together to do what otherwise is impossible, to keep us warming from another two or three degrees and ending life as we know it in so many parts of this country and of this world. If we're going to meet these challenges, we cannot do it by half measure. We cannot do it by only half the country. It cannot be Democrats versus Republicans, big cities versus small towns. It's got to be all of us coming together, defined not by those differences or our fears or the smallness of this moment in our national politics, but our ambitions, our aspirations, and the work, the sacrifice, the service, the creativity we will bring to bear in order to get them done. Are you all ready to do this? Thank you very much. Thank you all. Appreciate it.